Hi there and welcome to this video for Senior Physics on Nuclear Physics. In this uh, video we're going to look at nuclear stability and look at how we can develop radioactive equations. So what we need to understand is that whenever we get some form of um, transmutation, transmutation basically means that there's going to be a change in the uh, nucleus of the, um, an element due to its radioactive decay. So as a result, what that will do is it'll either, if it's undergoing fission, what will happen is the nucleus will split, will split into two different types of elements. And at that point, it's going to be releasing other radioactive particles such as alpha, beta, or, well, alpha and beta particles and gamma radiation. And often the stability of this is set up to how unstable the um, nucleus nucleus is. The more stable that nucleus is, less likely it is to undergo any form of decay. But how do, how do we know how this works? Now we know that neutrons and um, protons exist in the nucleus and what, the, what happens is the protons basically separate out the positive charges of the protons. Because you've got to remember that if you've got a proton next to a proton, they're going to repel, so they're going to want to force each other out. So the neutrons try and equally space the um, the protons and as a result by sp by producing the spacing they produce this glue this strong nuclear force which allows the um, the nucleus to stay within its compact place now this is the strongest force in the universe as far as we know and it's down to how well the um, protons are spaced throughout that nucleus. Now obviously if you've got two protons which are going to be close together you get more forces, the result is it's going to become unstable. So what we can actually determine is that we get a, a neutron to proton ratio. Now in small particles such as carbon, oxygen and nitrogen the numbers of neutrons to protons is approximately one to one. So you get equal numbers of neutrons to equal numbers of protons. The result is that they can equally space themselves out. The trouble is when we start getting into some of the larger um, particles, or if we go down into the, and look at the nucleus of isotopes, remember an isotope is an increase in the number of neutrons. We now get an imbalance and um, uh, there's a lack of symmetry between the spacing of the protons and the neutrons. What that leads to is an instability within the nucleus, and as a result, you've, you're, you're almost fracturing the glue, that strong nuclear force in certain areas, which causes um, the uh, nucleus to spit these particles out. Now, how this happens and, and what determines whether that decay is going to happen, nobody knows. But this is what has been observed. So we can see, looking at the, the um, box that we've got here, that a stable nucleide such as um, oxygen has, it has got eight um, protons and eight neutrons. So basically our ratio is, uh, is virtually one-to-one. -one. So you can see that as long as we're in that one-to-one -one, um, situation, you're less likely to get any decay. But as we start getting into um, uh, nuclei where they're not in a one-to-one -one relationship, we are, we're going to get more decay or more probability of decay happening. So the question now is what happens when it decays? How, do, how can we predict what's likely to happen? So radioactive decay can basically be determined using an equation. And that equation will be made up of the following things. We're going to have our parent nucleus on one side, and then that's going to split into our daughter nucleus, our new element, and there are going to be particles which are going to be emitted, either alpha, beta, or um, gamma radiation. In most cases, we're going to get some form of gamma or energy um, coming out. So what we've got to do is to make sure that throughout all of our equation, we are maintaining the law of conservation of mass and conservation of energy. So um, if you can bear that in mind, that makes life a lot easier. So whatever's on one side must be the same on the other side. So really all the equation does is on the nuclear form, just look at have we got the same mass on one side, have we got the same, um, sorry, have we got the same uh, mass with respect to protons and neutrons on one side and the same um, protons and electrons on the other, same atomic number, same atomic mass. Okay, so if we have a look at this um, radioactive equation where we've got here, we've got uranium-238 is going to basically 
um, convert into 234, I think that's thallium, 234, number 90. I'm just looking up on my periodic table up on the wall. Oh, uh, where's 90? Thorium, thorium, TH is thorium. So uranium-238 is going to convert, be converted into thorium and also an alpha particle. Now remember, an alpha particle is a helium nucleus here. We've not got any electrons. We've only got um, two protons and two neutrons. So what we're now going to get is our parent nucleus, daughter nucleus, and these particles. And here's the list of particles that we can have. We can have an alpha particle, we can have a proton which is going to be emitted, we can have neutrons emitted, we can have electrons which is a beta particle, we can have positrons. Now positrons is the opposite of an electron and you'll notice that it's got a plus one charge rather than an electron which has got a negative charge. These two things come together, they're basically antimatter. Two things come together, they disintegrate, they, they disappear. Um, and Base, and then on top of that, we've got our gamma ray radiation, which is going to be given out. Now, generally, what we're going to be dealing with is our alpha particles, our beta particles. We may deal with positrons and neutrons, and to a very small extent, we might deal with, with protons later on in this course. So let's look at an example, and let's see how we can pull these equations together. So here, we've got our same um, uh, radioactive equation, but how do we determine what's likely to happen? Well, the first thing that we've got to look at, you'll either be told what is the new element or what particles are going to be emitted. So if we look at the mass numbers on both sides, we've got a mass number 238 on our left-hand side, and then we've got 234 and 4 on the right-hand side. So we're looking at those top numbers. So 238 and 234, and if I add together 234 and, and 4, the result is... I get 238. So whatever's on the right-hand side must equal what's on the, on the left-hand side. And then if we look at the bottom numbers, I've got 92 and uh, 90, and I've also got 2. So the result is when I add 90 plus 92, it's going to equal what's on the right-hand side, uh, left-hand side, sorry, which is 92. So what you can see there is this conservation of atomic mass and conservation of atomic number. Whatever's on the right, must equal what's on the left. Once we know our atomic number, we can then determine what our um, element is by using the periodic table. So the number of protons identifies the element, and as I say, we can, we can pick that up from the periodic table. Note that if I've got a beta particle on the far side, that's going to have a negative one. So basically what's going to have to happen is I've got to add that to the atomic number. So you'll find that we'll have an increase in an atomic number. And we'll look at that later on when we look at another, um, another particle. So basically if I'm getting um, something which is going to be producing um, 90 and 1, that will give me, um, when, when we put them together, will um, increase in that atomic number. And uh, yeah, that's all down to the fact that we've got this negative charge which has been generated by the, um, by the electron. Okay, so let's look at this uh, example we've got here. We've got radon-226 is going to emit an alpha particle and we're going to say, hey, well, what's it going to produce? So the first thing we need to do is look at our atomic masses. So I say 226 on one side, I've got four on the other, and if I take the two away, that will give me what the atomic mass is for the uh, question mark there. And as you can see there, it's 222. Then I can look at the um, atomic number. 88 on one side, two on the other, take the two away. That means I must have it at um, 86, I must have an atomic number of 86. So then I go and look on the periodic table. Sorry, instead of 88 there, it should be 86, apologies for that. And we get the, we get the element radon. Radon at 86. Just double check that I've got that right. Uh, where's 86? Yeah, radon sitting at 86. So it's got a mass of 222 and it's got a periodic um, atomic number of 86. So my overall equation will be um, radium 226 goes to produce an alpha particle and radon 222 is then going to be produced. And that's it. It's fairly straightforward. We just follow those processes 
and fill in the equation. Now, obviously, in certain radioactive decay, it's more than one equation that we're going to be dealing with. So you, that's where the complexity begins to build up. But more on that on another um, video. So what I'd like you to do is um, check out the exemplary video that I'm going to put up on the board. And I've also got um, some worksheets for you to work through on this post, which will allow you to practice what we've just learned there. Okay, well, I hope you found that useful. And um, I look forward to meeting you again soon. Bye for now.